Hi, this is Chris Kepler with Does This Happen to You? The weekly podcast where we explore our daily anomalies, bringing to life short stories by fantastic writers never heard in audio format. A weekly mini audio book about life and befuddlement just for you. This week, we have a special holiday story from my blog on Chinillo, Does This Happen to You? And here is blow-dry turkey. I'm a food explorer, always trying new recipes and usually tinkering with them. My mother is 86 and no longer able to cook Thanksgiving dinner. I look forward to taking over that duty this year. How many Thanksgiving dinners have I cooked before this one? Zero. But I'm not unfamiliar with cooking an entire turkey, as I succeeded splendidly once before with that endeavor. I'm not anticipating any problems with my first official Thanksgiving effort. After a three-hour drive over the mountains, we arrive at my mom's house. First order is cutting the turkey out of the wrapping and applying the dry brine. Once I locate a tray large enough to hold the 19-pound frozen bird, I rinse and apply the salt. The bird is still partially frozen. I seal it in a large roasting bag. Sure, it will be unthawed by tomorrow. I shove it into the refrigerator in the garage. I glance at my other recipes, determined to get started first thing in the morning and have a few glasses of wine with dinner. An early morning appointment for my mother puts me a bit behind. Not worried, I begin with the broccoli, cranberry, and almond salad. My mom's automatic manual chopper makes short work of the onion. I carefully chop the broccoli into edible pieces and mix the dressing. Voila, one salad done, seasoning itself as it sits in the fridge. My mom's oven is small with room only for the turkey. My genius workaround and non-traditional choice is using her crock pots for side dishes. The wild rice dish is a slam dunk. Just pour the rice in with the chicken stock and seasonings and turn on low. Yep, another dish completed and only the turkey, potatoes, and pudding to go. I'm running on all cylinders. A glance at the turkey recipe indicates I'm a bit late in getting the brining bird out of the fridge. No worries. I extract the bird from its bag and attempt to remove the neck. It's frozen solid in the cavity. This is not according to plan. My mom then mentioned she often needed to pour hot water into the cavity to get the neck and giblets out. Afraid of washing too much nice brine and butter off the bird, I hesitate to pour hot water into it. Jack, my partner, proposes the hairdryer. We give the bird's chest cavity a nice hot wind for a few seconds, then the dryer shuts off. Neither the bird nor I care if things get a bit hot, but the blow dryer overheats while melting a dead turkey's bottom. We move to plan B, boiling water. I instruct Jack to carefully handle the bird without disturbing the seasoning or butter while I pour. My workaround is boiling the water I plan to use in the roasting pan anyway. The boiling water exits the cavity right into the pan, like on cue. The neck still frozen in place, we dump the bird into the oven at 450 degrees. I figure I'll just leave it in at that temp a bit longer than specified 30 minutes. We soon discover a partially frozen turkey at high temp gives off a bit of steam, sizzle, and smoke. Our frantic attempts to retrieve the neck and stuff the cavity with orange sections is now accompanied by the deafening rattle of the stove fan desperately removing smoke. The bird comes out and goes back in twice as we check for neck melt. On the third attempt, the neck gives way, but no giblets appear. Since the giblets are MIA, the cavity is filled with orange sections and the breast covered in foil. The oven temp lowers to 350 degrees and we'll have browned and juicy turkey sometime in the next three hours if I'm lucky. I dump the potatoes in the other crock pot. Now, by far my most difficult feat, the chocolate pudding, which the recipe indicates is easy. I don't like to bake, but we possess lots of chocolate a friend and certified baker gifted us. I like to use food before it spoils. The pudding thickens, 
but to a thick sauce consistency, not to fall off the spoon in a lump consistency. Well, I'll just put it in the fridge. That should do the trick. In the end, the turkey turns a beautiful succulent brown, and the side dishes are a hit with the guests. The chocolate sauce, not pudding, changes a rather dull pumpkin cheesecake a friend gave us earlier in the day into a very yummy dessert. The red and white wines complement the dinner, and I down several glasses of them. Hey, I deserve it, and the wine glasses only hold a few ounces anyway. I just survived cooking my first complete Thanksgiving dinner. I learned a lot. Defrost the turkey now. Blow dryers don't work on dead frozen turkey, and have an extra dessert on hand if you're going to attempt baking. Thanks so much for listening. If you like this story or my podcast, please share and let me know. And if you want to hear multiple stories like this multiple times per week, please become my podcast patron. Just click the link on my Podbean page.